Ever since moving to this homestead about six years ago, I've been buying a lot of things from Harbor Freight. So in this video, I'm putting together my favorite and least favorite items to buy from Harbor Freight. Let's go. All right, item number one on my list is this Triton Pittsburgh heavy duty floor jack. So for, for starters, I'm not a mechanic. I, I don't have a shop, I don't have a concrete floor. And I thought all these three things are requirements for you to get one of these units. Nonsense. This thing has been absolutely indispensable for fixing anything on the homestead. And uh, it has spent zero seconds of its life on a concrete floor. So here is it fixing a lawnmower. Here it is fixing my car. And it's a BMW, so you know, those two had a very close relationship. And here it is fixing a trailer on the side of the road. Um, it's actually shockingly portable, so you just come here, undo this screw, the handle comes off, and you can put it on the back of the truck and take it with you. Next up is the most expensive item on this list, and it is this greenhouse. I have a separate full-length uh, review of it, uh, but the highlight is this thing has been fantastic. I've been growing a lot of veggies in here. This has been here for five years and it's still going strong. I will definitely recommend it. And for really expensive items like this, wait for a big holiday and Harbor Freight usually has a 20% off coupon for any one item. So take advantage of that for sure. For the next item on my list, I'm here in uh, the watershed and it is this uh, Drummond pressure pump. This thing has been incredible. It currently costs about $220 a Harbor Freight and competing brands are easily over a thousand. I have this installed right here. It's been going strong for four years now. So the pros of this is that it's a heavy duty cast iron construction, super sturdy, and it already has the pressure switch built into it. So you don't have to pay any more money for that. The only downside of this unit is that it operates on 120 volts instead of 240. So if that matters to you, that's how it is. But everything else, it's two thumbs up. Next on the list is a lot of magnetic items. Uh, I love these things. These are uh, six inch containers to store random bolts and stuff. They come in six inch and four inch. I prefer this one, it just stores a lot more stuff. Whenever I'm working on a machine, I take a couple of these and any bolt I take off, I put it here instantly. So here I have uh, like a chainsaw project and these things just can stay around here and they won't roll and, and disappear randomly. They stack like this super nicely. The only thing to watch out for is that sometimes the magnets in this are kind of reversed. So it wants to sit crooked, right? <laughs> but usually the four inch and the six inch within themselves have the same polarity. In the same light, uh, you have these uh, magnets here, which I've used to organize my tools. They come about 18 inches, so they fit between studs just perfectly. The only thing magnetic from Harbor Freight, which I don't like, is this uh, pickup tool. It even has a light, which doesn't do much. I like a magnetic tool, but I like the one that is collapsible better. This one is just too long and too unyieldy for me, so I don't love it as much as I thought. For example, this is a piece of one that collapses, right? Uh, it used to be longer, but I broke it, um, and I really need to go get another one of these. Uh, this thing is a much better design because it just is so compact when not in use. So a bunch of people that uh, have made similar lists about uh, what to buy from Harbor Freight uh, are saying to buy impact sockets from there. Uh, and I, I agree with this. You can't really go wrong with impact sockets. Uh, I've had this from before. Yeah, it's, it's some like random brand. It doesn't matter. The thing that matters to me is that it is all in metric only and it has a compact package. So what I have from Harbor Freight though is these guys here, they kind of pivot a little bit and I added this label so that you can see the size on them. This Torx, I probably just needed the big one here. I have long hex here, reverse Torx, a bigger set of reverse Torx. I probably have more stuff here, but really like unless you're really a high paid mechanic for any kind of sockets or tools that are not super specialized, Harbor Freight is the first place I go to, to shop. For example, this is a set from Stanley. I love how compact it is. 
It's all metric. Um, the thing I don't love is that it doesn't really have clear numbers of what is what. So I had to like write this down. Uh, the other thing I don't love is that, look, look at this. This has 12 sides. I believe this is much easier to strip than something like this, which has six sides. I will always pick a socket that is this kind instead of this kind. You know, that's just my opinion. Next on my list is this whole saw kit. Again, I added this uh, label here. And this comes from uh, three quarters until two and a half inch, two and a half inch sizes. This thing has had a ton of use, so they, they come in this kind of white color, but um, after using them for a while, they, you know, they lose the paint and some of the teeth. But this thing has made a ton of holes, usually in wood or drywall, but uh, this can cut from metal as well. And you have all the, really all the common sizes you need. I had to go and buy this, this guy here for installing light fixtures and this thing here for, I don't know, something else. But I'm pretty sure that I spent more money on these guys than on the whole set here combined. The next item on the list is a little bit controversial and it is this uh, Warrior drill bit set. It comes with a ton of drill bits. The reason why it's controversial is that objectively these drill bits are crap. However, they're crap if you need to drill for metal or something that is uh, really high precision or you really don't want this, this thing to break. For that case, I have this uh, set of Milwaukee's here that are okay for that. But for all the other purposes, like drilling holes in wood or plastic or soft metal, this thing is fine, like you just need the, the right size. So having an option with lots of sizes, really nice. Next on the list is this Harbor Freight zip ties. I usually buy the 11 inches, black or white, depending on what uh, looks better. They also come in this 1000 piece set, uh, but to get to 1000, they really include a bunch of the tiny ones that are usually useless for most things. And if this doesn't work to keep something in place, this Gorilla Tape helps a lot. So obviously not gonna be launching uh, satellites in space with uh, zip ties and, uh, and duct tape, but you'll be shocked how many things you'll keep in place right where you want them with just these two things. I was super excited when I found out this iron bar in Harbor Freight. So this is almost uh, six feet tall it has a, a very solid uh, spot on one side and a flat tip on the other side. This is a very solid lever and on a, any sort of farm you have countless uses of a lever. This does not bend, it's super solid. The one downside of this guy is that it's just so long and it's a bit unyieldy uh, for you know smaller spaces. So I was excited to find out this uh, 36 inch uh, pry bar by Pittsburgh. And this is actually a piece of crap. This is just too soft and it, uh, it twists like a noodle as soon as you put some pressure on it. So I would not advise getting this guy, but I'll definitely advise getting the big one. Next up is brushes and painting supplies. So this seven inch uh, wooden bench brush is only $1.99. This thing is far better quality than uh, things that Home Depot sells for $10. Also you can buy um, just boxes of brushes either with the bristles or with the foam for only a few bucks. Really my, my go-to source for uh, brushes. Uh, I used to do a bunch of work with uh, fiberglass where essentially you have to throw away the brush after using it. Tray liners and, and all that. The one thing I would not buy from Harbor Freight though is uh, masking tape. I only go with 3M Scotch masking tape and anything else is just vastly inferior. And it's almost the same price, so um, why go with anything inferior? Next up are a couple of options for tap and die sets. So for the tap and die set, I had really strong reservations against going with Harbor Freight because uh, when you're you know, putting a thread in, in something and if this thing breaks off, you're, you're kind of screwed because there is no drilling this out. But I found this to not be a big issue. And also I found that I, I haven't really seen other sets from other brands that are better quality and decent price. So I've been going with this and, and so far I've had zero issues. So 
Give it a shot. This, the, the bigger set with the larger sizes, uh, you can probably pass on that unless you really deal with larger machines maybe or um, just larger size bolts. Uh, the good thing is that, uh, yeah, this has uh, a lot of larger sizes. Like I've used this guy zero times, but if I need to, I'm sure I can find it. Up is uh, just a variety of items that uh, will be very handy if you ever get a machine stuck in the mud. Uh, so you have these uh, recovery straps, which are rated at uh, 6,400 pounds. Um, and these uh, shackles, you have larger sizes and smaller sizes. Um, this is the, the place to get them. Like Harbor Freight, I think, has this really dialed in. Uh, this can pull incredible amounts of weight. And you have also a longer version of this. This has seen a ton of use, but uh, I've had zero issues using this over the years. And for longer rounds, you can just uh, daisy chain a couple of them uh, next to each other and uh, off you go. For times when you really <laughs> need something sturdy though, you can get this uh, utility chain and it comes in a bunch of different sizes. I found this uh, 5 16 or 1 quarter to be really good sizes. Um, so it comes with a chain like that. Uh, and then you can buy uh, this hook at the end, and it really is all you need. Um, just for just a note though, you can use a this is a one quarter inch hook. It still works on a 516 chain. You just need a, a hammer to convince this to go in. But once it's in, it really works pretty well. So it goes on like this, right uh, over the whole chain. Don't don't try to do this stuff. Uh, this is not good. No, do not do that. It goes over the entire link and it just pulls like that. That's how it's designed to be used. And finally, winches. This uh, Badland winch line is surprisingly good. I also got this hitch attachment here so I can put it on the front or the back of the car instead of having this permanently installed. I paid a good amount of money for this snatch block from like a brand name and uh, it got messed up uh, pretty pretty fast like like look at that and then i discovered that badlands has a snatch block which is much sturdier so look at the metal uh, thickness here this one has not had an easy life if you can see all these markings here and zero issues so for context, I pulled on my excavator, it's 10,000 pounds, fully stuck in the mud with this snatch block and my tractor winch, which is rated at uh, 12,000 pounds. This thing was solid, super highly recommend it. And if you're only getting uh, smaller things stuck in the mud, this uh, come along winch uh, has been actually fantastic. It's, you know, a little clumsy and all that, but you know, once you get pulling on something, uh, you can... <laughs> You can pretty much pull anything out of anywhere with just this really compact setup. No need for power or anything else. And even counts with its own uh, kind of a snatch block here. So pretty good uh, as a starter tool. The next broad category is air tools and air setups. I have a whole long video about this uh, central pneumatic 11 gallon uh, portable uh, air tank. It's pretty handy tool uh, to carry air around uh, where you don't have access to a compressor. Uh, check this out to, to see how to un-Chinese it and improve it a bit. And a very quick, easy tool to use all this air on is this central pneumatic um, nailer or stapler. So I have both this central pneumatic one and a, a Banks one here. Uh, the difference is that uh, the Banks one is somehow maybe a higher-end brand, but this guy only can do uh, brad nails this one here can do brad nails or staples. Uh, and honestly, I, I prefer this a lot. Uh, so you can open this here and switch from brad nails to staples. Let me just swap it out, goes like this. And now you're doing staples instead of brad nails. I, I prefer this much better. I actually have my uh, air hose reel also from Harbor Freight. This is the non-retractable version uh, and I <laughs> improvise here and set up a double hinge so it can open uh, and swing outside and I can be out in the wild using uh, you know the air tools. Uh, so I just used a couple of uh, hinges tied together and a uh, this like sticky thing. For 20 bucks you can't really go wrong with it. 
And at the same time, what I found disappointing was this uh, air hammer. So it um, counts like this and counts with a bunch of uh, bits here. I just found this to be underpowered for my purposes and I have barely used it. And because of that, I cannot recommend it. The next item on my list is this uh, Pittsburgh Automotive tubeless tire repair kit. It looks like this uh, in the store and this thing is the best 650 you'll ever spend because if you have a flat tire you can repair it without even taking the freaking tire off. Uh, so once you use up this kit you can keep uh, these two uh, tools from it and then just buy more glue from slime and more repair plugs also from slime. And uh, with this set here, you can repair a lot of, a lot of tires. Hover Freight has amazing value in these assortment boxes, like these uh, hose clamps here. Uh, how many is that? 40 pieces of hose clamps. These are actually pretty sturdy stainless steel clamps. I'm, I'm very happy with them and they come in all the sizes you want. Similar to these uh, linchpin assortments, a lot of stuff you need in one box. And the same with uh, these copper washers, if you're doing oil changes, you need to replace this every time and you're not gonna just buy this one at a time, right? So, uh, things like this, Harbor Freight is worth checking out for. The item that really blew my mind when I found that Harbor Freight sells is this zero gauge battery cables. These are just monstrous cables. I, I love them. And they go really well with this kind of uh, military style um, battery hookup. For just heavy machinery, these are just great battery cables. And just to, to compare, this is what you normally see. Just look at this, or, or, or even this. There's just no comparison. And then the connector, again, if you have something like this, you have to somehow connect it using one of these guys. You lose a lot of power just by the, the way the connections are made. And while we're on the topic of uh, wires, this uh, Viking 20 feet 2 gauge jumper cables are just amazing. So check this out. You have nice solid clamps, 2 gauge wire. Like, check this out. This is another brand of jumper cables. I, I, I can't emphasize enough just how much better this one is. This is just a joke. I don't know why people are allowed to sell this kind of stuff. But these, these are probably the best jumper cables I've ever seen in my life. Harbor Freight usually has very competitive pricing, but there is one case where you should be very careful. Let me show you. There are many cases where Harbor Freight sells brand name products like this Permatex uh, Anti-Seize or this uh, Gasket Maker. Uh, the thing is, these are brand names that have nothing to do with Harbor Freight. It's just that Harbor Freight also sells them. And because of that, um, they don't always have the best deals there for those specific products. Let me give you an example. So this is uh, my power probe. By the way, this is an amazing tool. And if you're doing any sort of electrical work or troubleshooting, this is indispensable. However, because it's a brand name, it has nothing to do with Harbor Freight. You have on Harbor Freight, it costs $179.39. And at the same time, it's $114.97 on Amazon. So for brand name products like these guys, definitely shop around and make sure you're getting the best price. And now for some tools I would really not buy from Harbor Freight, mostly because there are better versions of it out there. One of it is uh, the Harbor Freight gloves. I, I used to buy these guys and um, the ones that are kind of thinner, they rip immediately and the ones that are thicker, you just lose dexterity in the fingers from them and then they also rip. So finally I found this, uh, these guys here, Venom Steel. So apart from the ultra manly uh, rough name, uh, these guys are pretty thin, you don't lose any dexterity, and I'm finding that um, I end up putting them away after the job is done and uh, having a bunch of used ones to reuse because they're still perfectly good. I never could do that with Harbor Freight gloves. The next thing I would never buy from um, Harbor Freight is uh, batteries. So for disposable batteries, I usually just go with Duracell. Uh, you can buy them from Costco at a reasonable price. And for the rechargeable ones, I usually go with um, actually Amazon Basics. They're pretty good batteries and you can recharge them uh, a lot of times. As for battery power tools, I would either go with the uh, DeWalt 20 volt line or the Milwaukee M18 line. Um, 
Either of these two brands will get you a lot happier usage than anything that Harbor Freight sells. And um, I have this one exception of this Ryobi uh, PEX crimper tool. I bought this because there was no other competitor on the market that was selling it. Uh, but I also went ahead and bought this uh, adapter here so I could use my DeWalt batteries on the Ryobi tool. And actually, I've been very happy with this guy. The trick there is that uh, normally you would uh, get into a product line and you have the batteries and the chargers, um, and that's the expensive stuff. So once you buy into a product line, you kind of stick with it unless you find something really compelling outside of it. This tool right here is my biggest uh, disappointment purchased from uh, Harbor Freight. I was so excited to get it because I wanted to be able to do some uh, sanding, and this one is the four by 36 inch uh, belt sander. Very promising, right? You just uh, turn this uh, belt on and you can send anything you want. But the problem is it's very cheaply made. Uh, it's an absolute pain to change this belt, which, I, which is why I've never done it. The motor here is underpowered and it is only operating at one speed. Uh, and uh, maybe the biggest reason why I don't like this is that I figured out that the tool I really want is actually this one right here, and this is what I got shortly after. This is a 2x72 belt sander. The difference is that this one is uh, homemade. It has a 2 horsepower motor. It's a three-phase motor with a variable frequency drive box here, which allows you to adjust the RPM to just the, the speed you want. Lastly, changing belts, you just come in here and you plop in the, the belt you want. It's a super elegant tool and um, it's essentially everything that that sander wants to be, but in a much better package. Um, I don't know if anybody actually sells this at a reasonable price, but there is a guy on YouTube called, uh, I think, Jeremy Schmidt. He has an amazing video about how to make one of these guys. I think this is uh, loosely based on his design. This is what this guy really wanted to be, but obviously for the price of this, um, it's just not achievable. So there you go. These are my most favorite and least favorite things to buy from Harbor Freight. I hope this was useful to you. Give me a thumbs up if so, or leave a comment if I missed anything. Thanks again for watching and on to the next project.